Oh my gosh. Man, it is a cold, gloomy winter night there. And Doomsday Trailer, it is a a Monday night. Where are we? January 8, 2024. So what this is, guys, uh, <laughs> I got this. Oh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to send this video out to the artist formerly known as Vegematic Deluxe uh, in honor of his new channel. Uh, and I will, I'm going to be having uh, the artist formerly known as Vegematic here on one of my channels here in sometime in the next week or so. So look forward to that. While we're waiting for that, um, uh, thinking about some of the old hippies I have known and loved in my life, we're going to tell one of those stories. But anyway, what this is, I, you know, I went to this New Year's Eve party last week, <clears throat> this picking party out in the woods before I went over to the karaoke club. And I could not believe it. At, at this picking party in this little small town in Florida, <clears throat> there is this booth with this woman uh, selling all kinds of candies and shit. And it was not just uh, cannabis products, but she was actually selling psilocybin magic mushroom candies. Uh, which I'm pretty sure is a class one narcotic in the state of Florida. And uh, so I picked up one of these things called a pixie stick, which is, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's, I guess it's some sort of powdered uh, psilocybin mixed into this candy, uh, you know, pixie dust. So this is just one gram of uh, one gram of magic mushrooms. Don't know when I'm going to uh, enjoy this. I haven't done shrooms. Good Lord, how many years has it been since I've done shrooms? So if, if anybody wants to do shrooms with Hambone, uh, drop me a line and we'll see if we can figure that out. <clears throat> Imagine me on mushrooms. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> that'll be the next time I do uh, mushrooms. We'll see how that turns out. But this story is going to be about the very first time, the very first time Hambone Little Tail ever did mushrooms in his entire life. And I'm, I know it was October 31st. My guess, this was October 31st of 2003 would be my guess. It had to have been 2002, 2003, or 2004. So we're going to cut the difference. October 31st, uh, 2023, uh, where my, uh, my, my good buddy, uh, an old hippie, character Fonty Fox was having his famous Halloween night bash that uh, Fonty is quite famous for his how to, I don't think he's, I honestly don't know if Fonty is still alive or, or what and he's probably not still having his bashes. But anyway, so uh, I have my date. We're going to, I guess we'll call my date Lulu. Uh, so I invite Lulu to Fonty's, to Fonty's, uh, Halloween ball, and, uh, Lulu did not seem that excited at the prospect. I remember she said, Hamma, wouldn't you just rather lay around and fuck tonight? And, uh, like a fool... See, this is when I used to have uh, just, uh, you know, my dates instead of going to a party. Uh, when I had all these women just saying, wouldn't you rather just stay home and fuck tonight? Those were the days. 
20 years ago, and I said, no, I don't want to just lay around and fuck tonight. I don't want to go to this party. So, Lulu really is a witch. I, I, I mean, no joke. It wasn't that she was just dressed up as a witch. She really is a witch. Uh, a, a, a fairly well-known witch in South Austin, Texas. So, of course, she dresses up as a witch, and I go as a South Austin pirate. That was my uh, that was my costume. I was a South Austin pirate, and so wait a minute. So this would have been when I, I had just gotten my real estate license in Texas. This would have been. Yeah, probably would have been. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure 2003. Irrelevant. Anyway, I was working as a realtor for Keller Williams Real Estate uh, at this time. And uh, so I dress up as a South Austin pirate with all the usual garb. Instead of a parrot, I had a plastic pink flamingo strapped to my shoulder, you know, instead, instead of a parrot. It was a good costume. I mean, Lulu really got me decked out as a South Austin pirate she decks herself as a witch. We head out to uh, to Fonty's Halloween Bash. She's he lived about 15 miles east of Austin, out like uh, kind of beyond the airport, out in that uh, out in that direction. So it was quite a ride out there. So of course it goes without saying, uh, being a Halloween party that I was. Uh, I, you know, I, I had my tequila, probably had a little more than my usual two shots of tequila. Of course, I had a bag of very good weed with me, so get there, having a good old time, having a big ass picking party at Fonny's out around the fire, everyone having a great time. I'm, I'm sitting there drinking tequila. I'm sitting there smoking some weed, feeling better and better. It's getting later and later into the night. Uh, so it's probably, well, I bet it was. I, I, I'm pretty sure it probably was the stroke of midnight. And, and, and I was already starting to get a little bit uh, cotton-mouthed, you know, between the alcohol and the weed already. I, I, would, I, I was fucked up, uh, I, I was half drunk, I was stoned on the weed, already getting a little bit of cotton mouth and thinking that I should be, you know, really, that I should cut it off for the night, that I had a long drive back uh, into Austin, and uh, that we should be wrapping it up. So... I go inside. I, I don't know where Fadi, where our host is. I mean, there were there were like, good lord, probably a hundred damn people there that night. So you know, I want to go and, and thank my host for a fine evening. So you know, we were out around the fire outside. So I go inside the house, and my guess is is that this was the stroke of midnight. Come to think of this detail, never thought about it. So Fonty was coming through his kitchen and he, he, he had a big glass punch bowl in his, uh, you know, carrying between his two arms, a big glass punch bowl with a little ladle in it. Uh, you know, it looked like iced tea in the, I mean, it looked, it looked like a bowl of tea. I was getting cotton mouth, I was thirsty. Uh, I needed to sober up before my, you know, before my drive home, and so I smack right into Fonty, and he goes, "Oh, Hambone," uh, and, he, and he had these little Dixie cups with him, uh, you know, you know those little, I guess, little one ounce Dixie cups, and he goes, "So," he, he, he goes, "Hambone, do you want some tea?" And, and well, I was thirsty as hell. I said, "Hell yeah, I want some tea." So he, he, you know, he pours me out. I'm the first one. I, I get the first 
the first serving uh, of Fonte's tea, midnight tea at his Halloween bash, and he gives me this cup of tea, and I and I belt it back. Well, it wasn't the best tasting tea in the world, but it felt good on the back of my throat. And uh, so he looks at me and he goes, Emma, do you want a, a another glass of tea? And I, I, I said, hell yeah, funny. Uh, I said, I'm thirsty as hell. So he, he ladles me out a second Dixie cup of tea. And I... And, and I knock that one back, and, and I hand him the cup back, and, and, and he gets this, you know, kind of confused, concerned look on his face, but he wants to be a good host, and he goes, so, Hambun, you want a, 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 a third glass of tea? And, and I said, it, well, if there's enough to go around, uh, yeah, I would appreciate one more shot. And, and he's going, what the fuck? And he's looking kind of concerned. And he, and, and he pours me this third Dixie cup. And he hands it over to me. So I knock that back. And, uh, and he's looking at me. And, and, he, goes, and he goes, damn, dude. Uh, he goes, not many people uh, like, like go for a third hit of my tea. And it all of a sudden hit me. And I said, God damn it. I said, don't fucking tell me you just did uh, what I think you did. And he goes, what do you think I did? I said, I think you gave me three fucking glasses of fucking psilocybin tea. And he goes, of course I just gave you. He, he goes, you fucking asked for it. So, I, I gave it to you. I said, motherfucker. Uh, I, I, I said, you do realize, Vati, this is the, that I have never had psilocybin mushrooms in my entire life. I was, well, how old was I? I, I was in my late 40, really, in 20, I was 44 years old. 44 fucking years old. Never had, never had a milligram of psilocybin mushrooms in, in my mouth. To this day, guys, I have never done a hit of acid. I have never done a line of cocaine. I have never done a hit of MDMA. I've never done DMT outside of ayahuasca. I've never smoked a cigarette since the day I was born. I said, mother fucker. And, and, and so now I had a triple dose uh, Fonty's famous magic mushroom tea at his Halloween party on top of the fucking weed, on top of the fucking alcohol. It's goddamn midnight. I'm dressed up like a goddamn South Austin pirate, and I have to get in my fucking truck and drive back to uh, and, and, and drive back to Austin, which, as I say, it wasn't like around the corner. It, it was like a fucking 15-mile drive I was getting ready to make. Midnight on Halloween night, fucking cops everywhere. So I go find my date, and, and, uh, and, and I said, darling, I said, you're not going to believe what the fuck just happened. She goes, what's the matter? And I told her, and, and she burst out laughing. I mean, this was the funniest fucking story she had heard. And, and, and she said, and she said, hey, Mom, uh, you know, kind of that Randy Newman song. And she goes, I told you not to come to this party. That this was a, you know, I said we should have stayed in tonight. And I said, well, we didn't. And I said, now we got to get fucking uh, back to your place. And, 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 and I was already freaking out. And she goes, don't worry, honey. Uh, I, I've got your back. Uh, let's just get in your truck. And, and I will get you back. Uh, we'll get us back home. So we get in the truck. And he like lives on the top of this like like little mountain uh, up this up this long winding road, and and I'm coming off the fucking mountain, and, and and these goddamn shrooms start rolling into my head. 
Well, I mean, just the alcohol and the fucking weed was bad enough. And now the fucking shrooms are rolling in. Get to the bottom of that goddamn hill and, 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 and like, like, fuck. Uh, you know, my heart was pounding. Uh, I was, uh, you, know, you know, doing this shit. So we come down. Those of you who live in Austin know this. So east of Austin, one of the major thoroughfares is called William Cannon Road. So uh, we take a, a, a left on William Cannon heading west back into Austin. Well, right about where we turn the road there, there's a bridge over Onion Creek where William Cannon uh, Road crosses uh, crosses Onion Creek. So I make the left turn and, and I start driving forward and in the middle of the fucking bridge. In the middle of the William Cannon Bridge, out of fucking nowhere, the fucking cops are having a, uh, a, a DUI stop, you know. It, 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 it's goddamn midnight on Halloween night, and, and it's like a big funnel where to get across the, you know, it's the only bridge. So all the roads funnel you down, and, and you go across the William Cannon Bridge, a perfect setup for the goddamn cops. They, they, they have cars coming and going. Uh, you know, looking for looking for drunks. I mean, come out there, and there's a fucking DUI checkpoint ahead of me, and and, and, and there's all of these red, these bright red and blue, uh, you know, lights looping around. There, there's like four cop cars there with, uh, you know, it makes me think of that, that Bill Hicks skit from Sane Man, he, he, you know, when he's fucking tripping and, and he's disco dancing to the, uh, to, <laughs> you know, to the siren lights, but there was no fucking humor in this, and, and, and I fucking freak the fuck out. I totally fucking go into a ham-boned blowout panic. Speaking of blowouts, <sighs> damn dog, I go into an absolute fucking meltdown. I slam on the brakes in the middle of the bridge. The cops are right ahead, you know, watching, looking for any suspicious behavior. I come to a complete stop in the middle of the fucking William Cannon Bridge. I have a complete fucking meltdown with Lulu. God damn it, I'm gonna lose my fucking job. We're going to fucking jail. I'm getting a fucking D fucking I. I'm losing my driver's license. We're going to fucking jail. I'm losing my fucking job. I'm screaming. I'm at the verge of tears. I'm sitting in the goddamn truck. I have a fucking pink flamingo, uh, you know, with his head sticking out the fucking window, uh, you know, my head wrapped up in, in, in a goddamn scarf. I, I have a marijuana leaf, well, I mean a plastic, uh, not, not real marijuana leaf, one of, the, one of these shiny plastic marijuana leaf necklaces around my neck. Uh, I, I am completely, totally fucked. And, and, and Lulu is sitting there, you, you, you know, who's the, the absolute picture of calm. And she's going, honey, she goes, Hannah, you have, you have got to get a grip. You can do this. And, and I do this. I, I, I said, honey, we're fucked. We're going to fucking jail. Blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and uh, I, 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 I'm there in the middle of the fucking bridge. And, and cars are, uh, you know, coming up. I'm blocking fucking traffic in the middle uh, 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 of the William Cannon Bridge. The fucking cops are, are waiting for me to come up there. And she goes, Hambone, just drive on through. 
I said, what do you mean drive on through? She says, drive on through and don't stop. They will not see you. And I said, they won't see me. I've got a fucking pink flamingo hanging out the fucking window. I think they're going to see me. And she goes like this. You know, she's got her, you know, her pointed hat on. And she goes, like this, right in front of my face. And she goes, drive on through, Hambone. We're invisible. I said, what? She goes, I'm a witch. We're invisible. They can't see you just drive on across the bridge just keep going and don't stop again and, and they will not see you no cops are going to arrest you you're freaking out every night and, and i'm saying just drive on fucking through these cops and, and, and don't stop and she says drive the fuck on through him i'm Fine, darling. Off we go to jail. So I put it in gear, and I just and I drive across the bridge. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm looking straight forward. I just drive on across the bridge. Then all of these fucking flashing uh, lights and everything. I drive right through the goddamn checkpoint. No fucking cops. Totally fine. We had absolutely, uh, you know, no problem. I did have a problem, like, when I would be coming up and there would be, like, three red lights in a row ahead of me. I couldn't tell which red light was the closest or the farthest. Uh, but other than that, pretty uneventful trip. So we make it home. And uh, I finally get my fucking ass to bed, you know, going, Jesus fucking Christ. I, I said, Lulu really is a witch. Uh, people told me this girl was a witch. Uh, I, I, I said, she fucking made uh, us invisible. So I finally crawl into bed fucking room is spinning all around, fucking lights flashing everywhere and shit. Finally, I go to bed and, 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 I, and I get up the next morning and I'm going, what the fuck was that all about last night? And like, how did I dodge that bullet? And you know, I got my goddamn real estate career. I, I got a and re return all these fucking real estate calls and act like a goddamn Keller Williams agent. So anyway, that would have been uh, November 1st, 2003, 20 years ago. And uh, so anyway, I don't know how many fucking times I told that story that I just told you the whole fucking, uh, you know, the shit with Fonny, uh, you know, the, the, the thing with, with Deborah making us invisible and me driving through that thing. I, I told this story over and over. I'm sure people got sick of hearing about Hambone driving the, you know, everyone fucking heard it. They had heard the story a thousand times. As I say, this is at least the second time I've told the story on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So anyway, this I'm telling this goddamn story. I can see it as clear as Cairo syrup, as clear as I'm looking at this fucking pixie stick in my hand. To this day, I can see those cop cars and, and those red and blue lights and uh, all of this crazy shit uh, in the middle of that bridge. I 100% I, I uh, and, and, and can recall this like it was yesterday. So I, I told this story. How many fucking years I'm telling this story? So finally it happens that I'm telling the story with Fonty. Is he's sitting in the in in the circle, and as he's there, you know, of course I wanted to uh, tell the story about how how Fonty inadvertently got Hambone fucked up on these mushrooms. 
he sat there and let me tell that entire story. <laughs> and, and then, and so I finish it, and, and uh, people are laughing, or people have already heard it ten times. And, 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 and Fonte goes, and now we're going to tell the rest of the story. And I said, what do you mean, the rest of the story? You weren't there. And he goes, and he goes, how about I didn't need to be there? And I said, okay, dude, what is the rest of the story? He goes, Hambone, there was no fucking DUI stop there. There were no fucking cops. There was no DUI stop. You imagined the entire fucking episode. That, uh, that 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 you imagined that entire fucking episode that you were so fucked up uh, on those shrooms and weed and whatnot that 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 you just created uh, out of your own fucking fear you you just created this whole thing that never fucking happened. You know, and, and thank God that uh, Lulu was in the car with you. Because you realize that Lulu has been telling the same story from her perspective, laughing her ass off how she had to fucking uh, get Hambone to, to drive across the fucking William, William Cannon Bridge. And like, I finally had to tell the stupid fucker that we were invisible. So he would fucking move. <laughs> Anyway, so I honestly don't know to this day, guys. So either, okay, it, it, it's one of the two things because there's no way that I drove through that checkpoint without ending up in jail. That's not an option. So it's one of two things. Either, either, uh, either Lulu really did make my truck invisible. <laughs> she cast a spell where that truck was invisible and none of those cops at that DUI stop saw me. That's option one. And, and, I'm, and that's my story and I'm fucking sticking to it. Or there is the slight possibility, guys, that it never... <laughs> that it never fucking happened. So, uh, I will let you guys, so how many people agree with me uh, that, that Lulu the Witch made the fucking truck invisible? I, I'm, I'm still, I'm, that's still my story. Uh, I, I think Lulu the Witch made that fucking truck invisible. It sure as shit happened. I, I, I don't give a fuck what anybody says that, that I made it up I made that story up out of my fear, that that was my fear uh, talking. Bullshit. So anyway, uh, it has been a while since I've done shrooms. This is only one gram, you know, this is one-fifth of what Terrence McKenna would call a, uh, a heroic five-gram dose. You know, I've done five grams, I've done five times this much four times in my life probably never do that again but uh anyway i just got to figure out the right time and uh do i want to do these myself or who i uh want to do this I, i'm trying to imagine i've never done shrooms with sancho what sancho is going to look like on mushrooms but, but, okay, but I will make this, uh, okay, I'm, 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 I'm making an offer. Dulcinea, if you agree to eat mushrooms with me uh, on my way back to New York, th this is a public offering I am making to Dulcinea, uh, who I honestly don't know uh, has ever done mushrooms or not, the very thought of Hambone and Dulcinea doing mushrooms together could be one of the great events of my life. So Dulcinea, I'm putting it out there to you. If you want to do shrooms, and this would be in April, 
uh, I will make a date and bring the shrooms and you and I will go out somewhere in nature and we will do mushrooms together. Just understand that if you accept that deal, uh, you will not be going home that night. That we are going to go camping somewhere because I am never going to drive after doing mushrooms. So you pick the place somewhere out in out in the woods uh, a power spot and uh, you and Hambone can do mushrooms together and see what the mushroom god has to say about you being my doomer chick forever so you have until April to manifest a way to sneak off into the woods somewhere and we will see where that leads. I have an idea where that's going to lead, but I won't voice it. But anyway, that is my uh, old hippie story. And do look forward to my interview with Chris, the artist formerly known as Vegematic, coming up sometime in the next week or so. Probably on Collapse Chronicles. We shall see. But I am going to bed. <clears throat> Bye, guys. Little dog, what are you going to look like on mushrooms? Can you imagine what this little dog is going to look like to me on shrooms? <laughs> Bye, guys.